Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do this really cool spiral loop rolling ball physics simulation. I think it's just so satisfying. I'm going to go step by step and I will be uploading this file to my Patreon. So if this is something you guys want to learn, keep watching. I think this is a ton of fun and the end result looks just really good. You can see here this video here, um, it just came out really well. So let's jump into it and I hope you guys enjoy. With a new scene open up in Blender, we're gonna select all of the default objects and let's go ahead and just delete. We're then gonna go Shift A and let's just add in a plane. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab into edit mode and uh, let's just go Control R. In fact, let's go to our top orthographic view by pressing seven on a number pad. And we're just gonna go Control R while we hover over this edge over here, Control R, double click. And now we have an edge running along the X like that. So we're just gonna select these verts over here and delete them and these two over here. So we just have these two verts kind of connecting with an edge here in the middle. And then we're gonna do in our front view, we're just gonna go G, X and move them over to the side like so. And then we're gonna go over to our modifiers and let's go add modifier and let's give this the screw modifier. And let's come over here to the screw uh, meter here. Let's just go and increase that value Let's go with 2.3 meters for now. Let's just increase the iterations a few times. And you can make this as much as you want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to three iterations as that's all I wanna work with. Um, what I'm gonna do as well, I'm gonna come here to the step viewport and let's just increase this because we are gonna be applying this anyway. So we don't need to worry about the render. So you can make this as much as you want till it looks nice and smooth. I'm gonna go with something like this. And at the moment, you know, we could do better than what this is. So let's go and while we're still in edit mode here, let's right click and let's go subdivide. And let's come here to the subdivision tab and let's bump it up to two for now. And let's grab these two verts in the middle and then go S to scale them up. And then we're just gonna press A to select everything and we're gonna go E to extrude and we're gonna go Z and extrude it up like so. And let's go control R, add in a loop across here. And then let's just select this face over here and go X and delete that face. So now we just have something that looks like this. And let's just go to edge select and just select this edge here and this edge here and go X and just delete those edges. And also just these two edges here, let's just select them, go X and delete those edges. So all we have now is this shape over here. And you can select these two edges here, you can make them a little bit higher. Um, so the balls that are running down don't fall out. One thing we can do as well, let's go to our vertex select option. Let's just select these four verts over here, these two here and these two here. Let's right click and go subdivide. And then let's just select these two new verts in the middle and go G, Z and move them down. And let's go control shift B and bevel them like so. And then roll our middle mouse button to add in more segments. And now we have this nice kind of trench effect here. So we're gonna tab back out into object mode and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna to come to the screw modifier and we're just gonna apply it. Then we're gonna tab back into edit mode and with everything active, we're gonna go Alt N and we're gonna go recalculate outside and now we fix some of those normal issues. Let's tab back out and let's go to our modifiers again. And this time we're gonna give it a bevel modifier and this is gonna smooth things out. And let's come here to the amount and let's make it, you can make it whatever you want. You can increase the segments here, but we want a nice smooth bevel on this. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and apply that like so. And now if you tab into edit mode, we have this. I'm gonna come up here, we're gonna go Shift, Alt, and just left click on this edge here to select the whole thing. At the top here, we're gonna go F just to fill that. And then while it's still all active, we're gonna go Control B just to bevel. Give it a slight bevel, and let's just give it a few segments like so. And now that looks okay. We don't really have to do the bottom one, but you could if you wanted to. So there are a few things we can do to make this look even cooler. We can tab into edit mode. And we're gonna go over here, go Control R, and add in a loop, which should spiral all the way down, just double click. And then come over here, Control R, you can see a loop, double click. And then holding in Shift and Alt, click on this one that we made previously. So we have both of these selected, these spirals. And we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate them, right click to let go, and then go P, and we're gonna separate by selection. Tab back out, and now if we click over here, we can see we have this thing over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go press F3, we're gonna type in convert. We're gonna to convert to a curve. Object, convert to curve. And now if we go to, since this is now a curve object, we're gonna to go to our curve properties. And let's go over down to our G 
geometry. And let's go down to the bevel amount here. And now we can increase this. And now we have this nice kind of thing happening here. You can tap into edit mode. You can select these things at any time. You can move them around. But you get the idea here. We're essentially making this nice bead that runs along here. And then you can right click and go shade smooth. So now we have that. And I just think that looks cool. What I did with my original, I just added in some UV spheres that I just added some smooth shading to. And I just brought them up here and I scaled them down and just put them here towards the ends. So I just thought that looked kind of cool. It's just kind of a cool way of capping it off like so. And I'm just gonna put it over here. Shift D to duplicate it and put one over here on the end. I think that just kind of looks cool. So now we have this spiraling tower modeled. Let's make sure to save as we go. I'm just gonna save this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a UV sphere, right click and go Shade Smooth. And let's take this guy up. Let's scale it down. And we need to make sure if we scale anything in object mode that we go Control A and we apply that scale because that's gonna matter with our physics. Let's go to our right orthographic view and let's just place it over here. We essentially just want it over this top part here. So when it falls, it can roll down here. It's pretty much common sense. So let's just go in to our top view. Let's go Shift D to duplicate. Let's tab into edit mode and then scale the mesh. And the reason we're doing that is so we don't affect the scaling. And then we're gonna tab back out. And let's duplicate a few more of these little ones. And then let's um, duplicate it again, tab into edit mode. Let's make it even a little bit smaller by scaling. And let's duplicate a few of these ones like this. So we're just going ahead, making a whole bunch of these things. And you can make all sorts of different sizes. It's completely up to you how you wanna approach this. So I'm gonna make this one maybe that size, make one even smaller, and just randomly duplicate them. So you can make as many of these as you want. But you kind of get the idea here of what we're going for. Okay, so I'm just gonna maybe duplicate a few more. The idea here is just to have these balls and they're all gonna fall in here and roll down. So now what we're gonna do is, let's just select any one of these balls. Let's go over to our physics properties. Let's give this a rigid body. And we wanna come here and make sure to make it mesh. And let's just leave everything else as it is. Like maybe the sensitivity, let's go to the sensitivity and just make it 0 0.02. So the margin amount here, that's just the distance between um, the mesh here, how it's gonna interact with this thing over here. But what we're gonna do is while that main one is still active, we're just gonna click and drag over all the other ones. You can see this is still the main active element and we're gonna press F3, we're just gonna type in copy. And you're gonna see an option here for copy from active and you can click on that. Now each one of these spheres or these balls here are gonna have that exact same property. So now let's grab this thing over here and let's give that a rigid body. And this one we're gonna make passive because it's not falling. And let's go to the shape here and let's make that mesh. And now if we go to frame one, which we should be on, we're gonna hit the space bar and let's see what that looks like. And you can see already we have our physics simulation running quite nicely. So what we're gonna do before we run it any further, we're gonna go to our scene properties for the physics. Let's go to our rigid body world and let's make the speed two times as fast. And let's go to frame one again, let's hit the space bar and let's see what that looks like. So you can see it's all working really beautifully. So we now kind of, we're pretty much done with this. We're just gonna now make it look a little bit cooler and then we're gonna cache things out. So let's go shift A, let's add in a plane. Let's scale that way up and then go S, Y, scale it onto Y a little bit. Tab into edit mode and let's just select these two back verts and go E to extrude and Z. And then we're just gonna grab this edge here, go control B to bevel it. You can do this however you want. I'm gonna go something like that, tab back out, control A, apply that scale, right click and go shade smooth. And let's go to our front view. Oops, so, so if you go to your front orthographic view actually, this thing here should be like that. Okay, so I've messed that up a little bit. So I'm just gonna rotate it around like that. So in our front orthographic view, we wanna see this, so we're gonna go Shift A. Let's just add in a camera, move it up. and let's move it back to here. Let's go into our camera view by pressing zero on a number pad. So here we have this. Let's go to frame one. We can now see these spheres. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my camera settings and make the focal length 90. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go I, with my camera selected, I'm gonna press I and go location rotation to add in a keyframe on frame one. And then I'm just gonna hit my spacebar and play the simulation. 
and I'm gonna turn on auto keying and you can see I'm now in frame 24 and as I keep pausing and playing what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move around with these spheres and what you might have to do at certain points is just rotate so you can actually see it and because I've got the auto keying enabled here it'll automatically do that so I'm gonna come back to 24 I'm gonna rotate it down move it up a little bit you can do this however you want but just make sure you, you play the animation and as it's rolling down you move your camera accordingly like so I'm gonna come right to frame 70 over here move it down and uh, you might have to go back to frame one and just run that again but the idea here is just to run your simulation and then take your camera as it's going along and just auto keying it along with the physics here so you can see here it comes at about frame 100 it's going down a little bit more so I might want to come and come down like this you can see it's coming through over here so I might want to pause bring it down a little bit hit the spacebar again and here you can see it comes to the bottom so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and maybe rotate the camera down but you kind of kind of get the idea here right so what we're going to do we're going to turn off the auto keying let's make the frames here 220 and let's now come to our scene properties and under our rigid body world let's go to the cache and make it 220 to match up with over here and let's just bake this into our scene it's really important that you bake this in so um, it'll render when we eventually render but now you should have this Okay, how cool is that? What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna add in some very basic um, things. Well, you can see here that the actual spheres are just falling through the floor here. And what we forgot to do was grab this floor and just go to our physics and give that a rigid body and make it passive and also make it a mesh. And we are unfortunately gonna to have to go back to our physics and just under here, delete the bake and just bake it again, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna let that quickly finish and then we'll get back into our materials and lighting. So it is now done finished caching and this is what we have. You can see here, our camera's animated, our physics are working here and now it interacts with this plane over here and everything kind of rolls back, which is what we want. So now we're gonna to go to our world settings. Let's give this a sky texture and uh, let's also go to our render and just make it cycles. Let's go to our render um, settings here. Let's make this a render amount 50. You can set it higher if you want, but I have to do noiser enabled, so that's gonna work okay. And we're gonna go control B while we're in camera view. Just drag over the camera to limit the render to the camera view. And now if we press Z and go rendered, and we go back to our world settings, we can see that sky texture we added is over here but what we need to do is we need to actually go to the sun rotation and just rotate it till the lighting looks like what we want i think that looks pretty cool i'm just going to come here to the strength and take it down to 0.4 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go shift a i'm just going to add it in a light this is an aerial light i'm going to go g z take it up and i'm going to increase the strength quite a bit and then increase the size and let's see what that looks like i'm going to go z and go rendered and this is up to you to determine how much or how little you want to do if you're lighting. But I might even go back to my world settings and just make it even lighter on that sky texture. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to bump it up even more. Maybe duplicate it, bring one in from this side over here. Like that. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. So now what we need to do is just add our materials. So let's go and select our backdrop here. Let's go to our shading workspace, give it a new material. And then under the base color here, let's just drag that and type in checker and get the checker texture. And now we have that. You can mess around with the scale however you want, but this is what we have. And now you can press Z, go rendered, and you can see that. And now let's select this um, spirally thing over here. Let's just go new, give that a material. And I'm just gonna make this um, under the base color slightly less white. And also make it a bit more reflective by bringing down the roughness. And then I'm gonna select these metal pole things over here, give them a new material, make them kind of darker and make them metallic. I'm gonna bring down the roughness and I'm also gonna select these two spheres here. 
And I'm just gonna give them that same material. So if you're now going to rendered view, you can see this is what we have. And then all we have to do is select these spheres over here, again, all of them, holding and shift, just select one of them and then give that a material. This is called balls. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go shift A, search and get an object, get an object info, and then plug the random into the base color. And then if we go shift A, search and type in color, we can get a color ramp and place it here. Let's change this to constant. And now we can take these tabs here and we can make them whatever colors we want. Okay, like this, let's just go with two colors for now. And then we're gonna go Control L and we're just gonna link all of those. So now all of these have that same material as this main active one. And if you now go into a camera view and we go Z and go rendered, all of them have this material and you can see it's just one material, but it's randomly um, adding color. And we can add as many of these tabs as we want, changing the color, um, trying different things. This is completely up to you how you wanna approach this but um, maybe go for a nice lime green, and it's pretty cool. Maybe a little bit less orange, drag this down. But you guys kind of get the idea here. And then let's just go and bring this roughness down. And there we have it. Now you can kind of just pause at a specific shot. You can go to your render settings. Let's enable motion blur, and let's save. And now let's go render and render image and see what this looks like. And there we have it. This is gonna look really cool once you render it out as an animation. And the way you can do that is to go to your output settings, select a folder on your computer, then change the file format to video. And under the encoding, you can change it to MP4. Just make sure to save and then go render and then render animation and it'll render it out to your destination that you chose. So that has been this tutorial. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll be uploading this to Patreon and I will see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.